at the reading today, it uh, definitely speaks to our situation today because we have a centurion, and again, a centurion would, uh, if I could make an, equ an equivalent with, uh, with the military, it, uh, it would probably be, if not a uh, full bird colonel, it would certainly be a uh, division commander. So it would, be, uh, it would be a general. But like I said, either, it, either it's gonna be a uh, brigade commander like a colonel, or it's gonna be a division commander. And he comes to Jesus and talks about his servant. And in the previous, we've seen Jesus heal, or we've seen Jesus being asked to heal somebody. And they say, you know, could you come to the house? And Jesus said, and yes, I will go. And then even at the healing of Lazarus, they say, if you would have been there, then Lazarus would still be alive. The idea that there must be a physical presence of Jesus in order for him to display his divinity. But the centurion who, and again, I, I am speaking from experience here, those in the military, like myself, tend to have a big ego. And then you put on top of that, being then an engineer, we have an even bigger ego. So I know all about big ego, all right? So I am telling you right now that as an officer, you have a big ego. So here is now a brigade commander who could easily have said, look, come to the house, heal my servant, and then I'll decide whether or not I'm going to punish you. All right? But that's not what he says. The centurion says, I am not worthy to have you come to my house. He says, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. And then he goes on so that, and then Matthew tells us later in the next line, he tells us who this person is in case now we don't understand because he's using, he's using Roman terms now. And he says, I am a man under authority with soldiers under me, and I say, go, and he goes, and another one to come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. All right? And so Jesus now marvels at what he said. So what we have here is we have this wonderful display of faith. And not only of faith, but of obedience to he who is God. And it's interesting because... St. Paul, in the book of Hebrews, talks about Jesus and what he says is, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered and was made perfect and became the source of eternal salvation. He learned obedience. So we're saying the son of God now has to be obedient to the Father? And that's not what the Holy Fathers of the Church tell us. What the Holy Fathers of the Church tell us, specifically St. Gregory of Nancius, tells us here is, do we say that now he was either, that he was obedient? No, we say that he was neither obedient nor disobedient, for this expression belongs to servants and inferiors, very similar to what could have happened with the centurion and Jesus. You will do this. I am a Roman soldier, and you are a subject of the Roman Empire, and you will do what I tell you. But St. Gregory tells us that is not it. But in the character of the form of the suffering servant who Jesus is, he condescends to his fellow servants and takes upon him and bears in himself that which we now offer to him which is our suffering and our obedience. So Jesus for us is the master teacher. And we call him the master teacher because in everything he teaches us. And one of the things that he teaches us is obedience. That obedience starts with the obedience to our parents. It continues into the obedience of the authorities above us. And one of those authorities as an Orthodox Christian is the church. The church does it in, and I will say this from experience, the church does it in a much more motherly way than the military does. 
So just be glad you're not under the military rule because there's mercy and compassion in the church, which is a good thing. And so we as Americans tend to think that we are obedient to no one. This is what we're told, right? We don't have to listen to anybody. We do whatever we want. And many of the political struggles that we have today, the source of that is that we do not understand obedience. And if we're not willing to understand it nor to do it, then we are certainly not, as St. Paul says, like Jesus in every way, like Christ, because he says he learned obedience, and we have to understand that through the writings of the Holy Fathers. And that's the lesson that we're supposed to take. It is, it is a proud thing in the Orthodox Church to be obedient to those who have authority above us. Now, that doesn't mean that we have no reason and no mind, but it means that the Church, as our mother, has certain things that she asks us to do. And to be obedient is one of those things that is part of our freedom. Very different from what we understand as this American freedom that has been shown to us. So this is why Jesus says to his apostles and to us, I have not taken them out of the world, but they are no longer in the world. And that's what this means. We live here in this world, but we are not part of this world. We are Orthodox Christians who now, who now take our authority from the highest source, which is Christ, as he has learned his obedience. So we then follow that.